Hi, it's Colleen Schmidt from Divination Counseling Service here today to present a medical astrology chart. We're going to be looking at the disease of the aphrasia, the disease that Bruce Willis was recently diagnosed with. And let's just start off with, um, as an astrologer, uh, if we were to look at this disease as a medical case, we would start with an asteroid called Broca, B-R-O-C-A. Okay, I'm just making sure in my notes here, Broca, however you say it, because again, I'm not good at that. However, um, I can look it up and I do know what it spells like. Uh, we're going to look at this because that's the asteroid we use to represent aphasia. Now, aphasia, aphasia is actually a disease that affects the brain. And uh, in the case of, uh, well, in the case of anybody, but in the case of particularly Bruce Willis, it may have been the result of, of a head injury. And I do think that for a lot of people that uh, can be a, truly a factor. Um, so are brain aneurysms, things that affect the brain. So mercury is going to be definitely something we're going to want to look at. It also, um, since 2002 was when he thought he had a head injury, I thought it might be uh, important to look at uh, Carpe, uh, the, which represents the head, Kof, which German word for head. Um, here's one I don't think I'm going to, I think I'm going to say terribly bad, Bechtavera, or Bechterava, Terva, 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 Bechterava, I don't know. Anyway, B-E-C-H-T-E-R-E-V-A. So these are, uh, and Willis, the ironic thing is, you know, they always tell us that, you know, when you're first learning the asteroids, that one of the ways you can start is by looking for your name. And isn't it interesting? His name is Bruce Willis. And um, he, Willis is also one of those head asteroids. So I thought that would be important. I also thought what would be important is I went to my teacher's blog. So I'm going to give her a little credit here because she's the one that kind of sent me the email. Hey, did you see? And then I went to her site, found the asteroid that she was looking at, Rocco, Broco, and then um, read about the head injury. She, you know, it was a little blog that she had done. So um, what I did was I ex expanded on her work. And I really wanted to look at it because I thought, you know what, here's a really interesting case, not just because this is someone famous that we all know, but because this is a neurological disorder that we don't really know anything about. And there are no cures for this. So it causes many strokes. It's it, you know, I'm thinking that it probably has something to do with the blood, but I'd have to really get in there and study um, it looks like that a little bit when you look at the chart, but this is where astrologers would then have to go back and do some medical research into just, uh, that's what you do. I, I think that when I'm doing medical cases, I'm on more edu medical education sites than you can imagine, because you're kind of being led on a path. And even though I did not study medicine, I do happen to know a lot about anatomy because of being both a yogi and a dance, a dancer and having studied anatomy. <laughs> I think that's another thing. So this subject matter is not hard for me. I, I definitely can follow it, but I have not studied to be a doctor. So astrology is actually teaching me things about medicine. And the irony is, is that my teacher would tell you the same thing though she does have several children who are doctors. Um, but with that said, when you begin to look into medical astrology, you have to, you have to follow the disease in the chart as much as you have to be able to find the disease and those factors that could be related to the disease. Okay. So I went through a few and before we get into the charts, just to be the teacher, I want to look at 
again, we're looking at Carpi, Kof, okay? Carpi is C-A-R-P-I. And it represents a head. Kof, also a head. K-O-P-F-F. Then we have, as I said before, the one I really can't say. Bechterver, Bechterva, um, B-E-C-H-T-E-R. E V A. And then we have Willis, W I L L I S. Okay, along with that, the disease itself, we would look at Broca, B R O C A. And by the way, um, one of the things I can tell you about when we start working with the asteroids and I start discussing them with you, it means that we've been using them. So they've been researched. My teacher doesn't really introduce any. Uh, new asteroids to us without doing her due diligence when it comes to the research that's necessary. With that, we also want to look at Mercury, the planet. It would be a good idea to look at things like Psyche, which again represents the brain. The um, Some of the things that we're going to be looking at in Bruce Willis's chart um, is that he also has Hades in this whole mix. And that tells you that it's a deterioration and that, um, that it's something is, is, is not good. Okay. It's not, it's, it's, uh, definitely affecting him and, uh, his ability to communicate. And it's very, very clear in the chart. And that's why I thought, oh my goodness, let's do this chart. I usually try to stay away from doing examples of living people. But I think that because they're sharing it with the world and I'm not going to be looking at his personal life, nor am I even going to look at the fact of his career, though I will tell you this, the career kind of jumps off the paper at you. But otherwise, I would say to you, this is clearly about studying this as a medical case. When you get involved in medical astrology, there are so many factors to work with. You're not going to stray far beyond the actual disease itself um, and perhaps solutions because there's just too much to swallow in all of it. Just way too much. Okay, so with that said, my goodness, I've been just yakking on here for a while. I do want to say thank you for watching the video. I also want to um, thank all of my subscribers out there. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll become think about becoming one. We are an educational channel. That's why it's much more special to me that, you know, we do continue to grow. And uh, I thank you all for that. Um, if you would like, share, comment, the usual. Anyway, with that said, as you can tell, I'm really excited about this information um, and all the things that we're going to be looking at. And I have a real thing about trying to keep these videos short. So let's go have a look. So I'm back and I have the right hand. So um, we're looking now at his chart. And um, oh, boy, did I write notes. The, I really want to get right to it because I also want to work on a dial. So let's go right to it. In Bruce Willis's chart, the uh, Broca, that um, aphasia, aphasia, aphasia is sitting at two degrees, uh, 16 minutes of, um, it says fixed. I believe it is Aquarius. And what else? So the first thing you would do is you go to the chart and you say, well, what else sits there? Oh, yikes. And the first thing you're going to see is you're going to see the moon is sitting there and Chiron, which Chiron is representative of turning points. And um, I could really go into this um, from so many perspectives, but um, let's just say that that will definitely, I think, be a factor because of literally um, the aphasia is something that is going is going to very much be uh, a, something that is going to change his life. Now, I'm going to talk about a few things. Now, first of all, just staying with the fact that it comes in with the moon, um, and I have a lot of stuff I'm going to say when we get to the dial, I also would like to point out while we're here just for conversation that Kof, 
K-O-P-F-F, we did discuss this earlier, this is the head, does sit right on his ascendant. So that kind of also is like, hey, wait a minute. Whoa, wait, you know? So that was kind of also a real ding, ding, ding. So there's a couple of reasons why I would have went like, oh, I got to take this and put it on a dial. But let's just stay with this a minute, okay? Um, also in Aquarius, a little bit beyond Venus, is Carpe, okay? Willis, which was really interesting, is actually squaring, but it's like a five-degree orb, and, and some astrologers don't like to go that far. But it is at 22 degrees, so it sits not far from Pallas in the house of, here we go, I think. Okay, so the communication house is affected. All right, this is a good chart. Um, boy, as soon as I put it up, I was like, I could see his career. So to me, if I could see something that clearly, it's an indication that we are working with a good chart. So with that said, staying with that, the other thing um, that I found really telling, although it would have been more so if it would be at, uh, below the horizon in the sixth house, in the, but is the fact that the sun fell right on the sixth to the seventh house cusp. Now you're probably saying, well, what does that have to do with the head? Well, actually in um, astrology, the sun falling in the sixth house would have been something, but it really doesn't. It actually falls into the seventh house, even if only by a few minutes, <laughs> but it was like, whoa. And, you know, and we, you know, I'm thinking this is a rectified chart. So I'm thinking the time is correct. Okay. The other thing that I saw here is that pain level conjuncts the sun. And as somebody who's done a lot of work in medical astrology, that is a real ding, 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 ding to me. Okay, that, th that something leads to something else. Remember the rabbit holes that we're creating. And if somebody's asking for just a general look and, they, and I saw pain level to the sun, I'd really look at it, okay? Um, I also think this was really interesting. Vesta happens to be, let me pick it out so we can know where it is. Uh, bah, 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 bah. It's in the axis. So I may have to wait till I'm in the dial for us to really see this. But let me look where Vesta is. There is a relationship, here it is, from Vesta at 22. Oh, I see what it is. Now I marked it. It is for the birth chart. Remember Willis at 22 degrees? No, you didn't know that. 22 degrees of Sagittarius is where Willis sits. Oh, yeah, I did just talk about that. Okay. I'm here. Okay, so here is where this sits, right across from his work, his career, his goals. So there's something about the head that is in opposition or is affecting somehow the work and the goals. I just thought that was really, really good. Um, Okay, the other one that I thought was really good, and this is when you, this is a rabbit hole, okay? This is me starting to look at, you know, a thousand plus asteroids to see what else is in, at least in conjunction or square two. I didn't do the full axis of these because um, I didn't want the work to get too long, but I did get something. I got a hit. Cove, which squares the ascendant, I'm sorry, conjuncts the ascendant, happens to square an asteroid gray. Gray can be used with regards to the larynx and the voice box. Okay, so there's an issue there. And you're going to find out that Mercury, um, which is, and I, and I, again, don't have all this written down and I really should, but Mercury in this chart, especially when I get to a dial, here it is, at two degrees of Pisces. Oh, yeah, I'm going to talk about something else. That reminded me. Um, is the uh, key, because that's where communication comes from. We already know that something's affecting uh, 
the head with regards to communication. We got that in the house. We have that it affects the work. It's in opposition. You see how we're coming up with a story. Um, we also have to look at Mercury. Now, this is what's interesting. Mercury is in what's called a um, semi, uh, it's an inconjunct. <laughs> I can't say those words. <laughs> I know what they mean, but I can't say them. Uh, they're too long and too hard for me. Uh, my Mercury can't do that. But his Mercury, okay, now notice that it's two degrees of Pisces. Just bear that in mind, in case Jupiter was just there. A bunch of stuff, um, you know, is affecting him or has been affecting him probably since even before. It's probably been a long time coming. Just because of all the stuff he has around early Aquarius um, and Venus being here. And Venus is basically where our Saturn is and, and it's been traveling through Aquarius. It's been making very hard squares to Uranus uh, in Taurus. So there's been a lot of dynamic energy there. So of course, that's, a, you know, that's where you want to start. But this two degrees brings up another subject. And not only do I want to look at Mercury and I want to see how Mercury is affected by Bracco, but I want to, I already know that there is an inconjunct. I also want to explain something to you that astrologers, at least astrologers I work with, have what we call another thing that we work with on the dials, referring to a golden triangle. And what that means is that every 30 degrees, because our dials are 90 degrees, formulate what's called a um, golden triangle. But what a golden triangle is, is that it takes into account all, all planets, transneptunians, asteroids that fall at the two degree mark between two and three degrees, such as the moon. Okay. Now Chiron's over that. So I'm not even going to play with Chiron at this point, but Mercury, the moon, the asteroid itself. Okay. Psyche is at three degrees 28. So psyche is in there. All right. Psyche. Remember we mentioned that that's another brain factor. It all, um, I'm sorry. It's not Leo. It's Aries. Um, I knew it was fire. It is three degrees of Aries. Okay. So it is in a relationship. It's sextiles really all that sits at that two degrees to three degrees Aquarius, including that Chiron. So you are now looking at, um, it's giving us more detail. And then if you go to Hades, okay, which is, and I have it um, right here, Hades is at two degrees, 40 minutes of Taurus. So it puts it right on the dial and we're going to look at this, all of those factors. But then you would go around and you'd pick up all the other twos. And ironically, one of those twos happens to be Mercury. So he really got hit. You know, aphasia was in his chart from the moment he was born. And um, I'm going to look at the dial right now. So because I really want to look at 2002 and I want to show you that something did happen, that he they nailed it, that he probably has had maybe some problems since 2002. And you will see even from the charts, there is no cure for this. Okay, not yet. But if we educate ourselves and we educate people around us, who knows? And also because we're dealing with the brain, could it teach us anything about even mental health to begin with? Okay. So when we look at this chart, and this is where the career is like, wow. Okay. So let's, you know, I don't want to stick around this Aries point too much. But um, I do want to see this. No, he wasn't the chart. I've been looking at so many charts lately. That's right. He's all in the later 20s. Okay. So I the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go right to that point where we're going to be seeing um, our uh, disease is right in here. Okay. So it's, it's right. Look at what we see. First thing up, okay, is we see this. This is what we get. Boom. And there's, you know, this is 
this is a, a difficult right away. Okay. Um, and so um, there is, I will say this, okay. There is victory, I think, through some advice. In other words, I think that there's been or can be advice from this and on this that can be helpful, but ultimately it doesn't work out the way they expect. There is a lot of, it is fated on so many ways, and it does refer to a lot of planning and strategy, and, and I'm sure that's what they're going through right now. Okay. So that's that's really important. Now, What's what my teacher pointed out and I found really awesomely wonderful as well, but she sees these things way faster than I do, which is why it's always good to go back and let her inspire me. Um, but she saw this right away and I seen it when she picked it up right here is an asteroid. Um, I'm not putting my pen on anymore because I can't turn my dial, but you see this asteroid right here. Okay. And that asteroid is psyche. That's the one I was referring to. It's also brain. But believe it or not, mathematically, and you can sort of see it, this place right here is the midpoint between Mercury and psyche. That's so sad. I mean, it's, wow. Wow. You know, it's Mercury, Psyche, it's Hades, it's Hades. There isn't, what are you going to do? It keeps deteriorating, okay? And to me, that's what makes it so sad. And it is sad, the moon is there, you know, and and that 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 makes it very sad um, from an emotional perspective. So that I think that it, for him, I feel so badly because I think that this uh, can be a very depressing kind of situation particularly for him who may be prone to it with a moon squaring hates. Okay. Now, um, and I'm just staying with this, but look at there's mercury. Okay. So what you're look at this, I mean, again, it, the nodes, okay. Cupido, the family is definitely helping him, but look at, here's another thing that tells you, it seems like it's getting worse. It's melpomene, which is right down here. And ironically between Venus and Mars. And I would think that this is going to limit, you know, actions and things. So that gives you um, just a little bit of information. Now, I can tell you that, um, you know, you we could go around this dial um, and point out, you know, other things like at 22 something, which is where Apollon is, is also where the head is. Uh, so I think that there it, it's interesting because... Um, and look at logical thought is affected. So uh, we could keep doing that. It's just going to build on our story. Um, that's what I did. I, I did put some of them down um, in, in all of this. Um, I am going to stress that not only does this equal um, Hades in all of this, but when you start bringing, there is also, look at this. I mean, there is also uh, um, uh, Saturn as he ages, and then it has the Pluto Mars again. I always, I, I just, I, I like to look at all the different. I'm going off on tangents. Sorry, guys. I really do want to keep this clean. So let's look at. With that said, let's look at the next chart, okay, of when the head was hit, because I don't want to go on forever. I could just babble. Okay, so. A lot of rabbit holes. Boy, let me tell you, hopefully I don't run on like I've been. I want to stay on task. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to show you where everything is here. Okay, so if this is the chart, let's go back to the actual chart. This is the um, solar return for him for 2002 when something happened to his head, when he had a head injury. Ironically, this does show the sun. At least this chart does show the sun. And I'm going to do two charts. This one is the regular topical solar return. The other one is going to be sidereal time, which is a corrected time. Um, the uh, This chart that we're looking at right here has the sun like 
and smack right in the uh, sixth house. So I think that, you know, um, health wise, you know, that this might have been somewhat trying even of a year in addition to um, having a head injury. Um, it also is um, pointing out um, some, a lot of, um, well, let me not get off on a tangent. <clears throat> let me go back to my notes. Let's just talk about, first of all, where everything is. Okay, so we're starting off with the fact, that's why I want to start over here, that the Bacterova, Bacterova, cannot talk, cannot speak, cannot say that, is actually uh, in the sixth house, not far from the sun, but not making any kind of conjunction. Okay. It's only 1051, but what it, it, but, but this is interesting. So that first head asteroid may not be that close to the sun, but guess what it is close to. And this is just looking on the chart first, the asteroid Aragon, which is a self-destructive behavior. So was this an injury, the result maybe of clowning around? I don't know. And I'm not making a judgment on it. I'm just going to say that there was something about it that was self-destructive. It also points to the fact, and this is really interesting, because both Willis and Carpe are at 23 degrees Pisces. Um, and it's interesting because Neptune is coming there. You know, Neptune's a funny thing. Neptune is like deceptions, but is also times when there can be clarity. And it is interesting because we're going to have a retrograde over that. Okay, so we're probably going to be learning more. Uh, Carpe at 23, 29, and Willis at 23, 44. And um, <clears throat> this particular year. So, you know, as something comes to hit that point, that's when things can happen. Okay, so um, we have those two asteroids in Pisces, and ironically, they are also inside that sixth house, that already jam-packed, fully loaded sixth house. And they're both at 23, but look here at... Um, so at 23, we do have the black moon. So again, I'm not sure how that could be read there, but that's pretty close to exact. So I know it has some symbolic meaning. And then over here, you see that it's very serious that this Levitina, um, it's, uh, or it's, uh, um, no, it isn't, uh, Lat it's not Latitia, it's, it's uh, Lacrimosa getting my asteroids mixed up. So we know that it's serious. We know that it's very serious. Okay. Loaded, loaded in that house, just absolutely loaded. Now, as we would then, um, I would go, you know, look at the opposite. You have Nemesis at 934. That it's, it's to blame for something, something that's going on in the environment, something that's happening is, is a uh, nemesis. Okay. Opposite our very first head asteroid. Okay. Th and this is just me, what I would call, this is not even, this is just skimming the surface of the chart. I can tell you that a uh, cove at 2455 is at almost 25 degrees and at 2640 is Uranus. You're going to see that Uranus, which can represent accidents, plays a huge part in this chart. Okay. In the uh, chart four, there we go. Um, it also refers to how Brady uh, in the natal chart. So I'm actually going back. I knew I had notes somewhere else. I did. Uh, actually, um, is a, for, for slow motion, it's a, they call it stone face. It sometimes happens with Parkinson's. Um, things are slow to react. Well, 
apparently he was affected that way. Um, my teacher said to look at Mars, um, his natal Mars is already in the Aries point. I, that's one of the things that you would want to look at with regard to even his career. I can tell you that, um, that the front part of the brain is, um, the executive function and he does have, um, complications running with feeling alone or being by himself, uh, Prosephine, Prosephina, um, with, uh, complications, which is arachne equals Zeus Kronos. And I think that's the ability for his executive function to fire. Okay. So again, it makes one wonder. Um, I'm trying to f w figure out, see, this is where I get messed up on my notes. Is it this chart? Let me go to this. There is a chart where I'm going to put it in and see if it's this one. And it is. Oh, yes. I did research on both of the solar returns. I don't know that we're going to need to do that here um, because the, uh, the dial changes the chart, but the planets are still where they were. Okay, it's hard to explain. Um, people who study other forms of astrology that study sidereal astrology, which I am so not familiar with. So I got to say that right off the bat. Um, but yet when I do an interpretation from my style and they do an interpretation from their style, it really does work out. Well, I sort of feel that way sometimes when I'm doing solar returns. The solar return is really different when you look at the actual structure of the chart. But when you get to the dial, the only thing that's going to be different is the ascendant and the midheaven. Otherwise, there are no houses. So everything else remains the same. So I'm going to put that in, and that's telling you that this is faded. Did I not see faded when the accident happened? That was a prominent concept. That faded asteroid is hubris. And hubris is ironically running with Cupido, which is, here we go, the face. Remember I talked about Brady. Okay, so a little lesson on these asteroids. I don't know. Hopefully you're taking notes if you are unfamiliar with them. And if you are familiar with them, then I'm sure you're following. Um, the It makes me wonder if it's his facial muscles that are very affected because Toro is also in there. Um, and again comes the asteroid of self-destructive behavior or... Um, tendencies. And, um, that accident that's, you know, so here we have it, you know, in the solar return of this year. And that's right. It was in the natal chart that we saw. Um, one of the asteroids said something about it being faded. Well, here we're getting it faded and it's an accident and it's something that happened that was maybe even, um, uh, in other words, he, he kind of did it to himself, so to speak. So, um, but so it's really interesting to go in there and look at that stuff. All right. So let me go on because I really want to get through all this. Okay. So again, I, I thought, Hey, you know what? Carpy's up here at 23. Here we go. And, um, let's go 20. Let's go later into this, but right away you see the black moon pops up. Okay. That there's Lilith. So something has to do with this and it might even have to do with how he feels about things in his life. But, you know, it's, it really is like, um, it's changing his direction. Here's Letitia's right here. See how it kind of bends off, but here's one that it's like a lot of prayer and meditation. And I really, really, I'm, it's so sad. Um, sometimes when I read medical charts and it's very difficult for me and I, even when I went to my first brain tumor lecture um, with my teacher, some of these charts will bring me to tears. Um, I, I, I just, I can feel it. I, I, you know, it's a testament to how well I know my astrology, but the sadness is quite overwhelming. So just for the heck of it, let me pull up the final chart. 
So I have actually pulled this up and put it right where I wanted to be. Okay. So this is the second solar return. Okay. And I'm just to kind of prove out here. Um, I did want to, um, just do it on both charts. But what I did was I actually put it at Cove because remember Cove is the one that conjunct the ascendant in the natal chart. And I, it, even though it's retrograde, so it's not acting as it normally would, Cove sits at about 26 degrees. Okay, so right in here. And, well, it's actually there almost exactly. And the interesting thing is, look at, this is a health asteroid, scapulus. And here's pain. Okay. Now, look at this. It equals work and it equals taking care of oneself. Look at that. That's what Cirrus is here. Okay. So it's just amazing. And look at that. Saturn Vesta. Now, is it possible that he was having to separate from his work when this accident happened? Now, we don't know because no one's really told us. Or is it because even though it was in this chart, it took 20 years before it eventually did indeed separate him from his work? Just amazing. Just amazing. Okay, here's another one. Look where Psyche is. Right there, right there, right there. The dials are awesome because you, you, you know that if you can keep it pretty tight, everything there is involved. Okay. So it doesn't, you, you can go out a little bit, but you don't want to go out too, too far. Then you start to get crazy. But I really, um, I'm going to do the 23 again. One, two, three, here we go. There we go. Doesn't really change anything. Again, you see Letitia's. Again, Asteria. So in any event, hopefully that was informative. So, oh, I'm going to do the right camera this time. So I'm back and um, I just wanted to come back to, um, again, thank you for watching the video. Uh, hopefully you got something out of that and I wasn't too disorganized. I really can go down rabbit holes. Excuse me. <clears throat> I can really go down rabbit holes. And astrology um, has always been a subject for me to do just that. And so um, I just thought I'd take you down one of my rabbit holes. So I would hopefully will be continuing more of the medical. It is actually where I would say between counseling astrology and medical astrology is where most of my professional experience lies. I am a private reader. I know I hear this online all the time. Some people read for others and some do not. I am actually somebody who, thank God, does read for other people and um, and makes a living at it. So um, so please feel free to ask me questions and really, um, can, you know, I love the comments. I, I have to say more than anything, and I love the fact that people are so generous with their information. And that's what I want this to be about, sharing of information. I'm going to share with you my rabbit hole. So surely you can comment on that. With that said, as always, I leave you. Until we meet again, I wish you all only happy reading.